Hello and welcome to Crypted by State, Arkansas. You are probably confused as to why we are having two videos in the series that are back to back in the same month. I should note that, no, I am not totally focusing my channel on only the Crypted by State videos. The reason behind this oddity is due to me missing an upload to the series in October. So being as how I like to keep things within a certain time frame, I decided to double up this month. Due to its popularity, I highly doubt there will be many issues from my audience with another video like this. So join me once again as we continue our cryptid family road trip where we will be traveling from our previous location of Nevada and heading down the highway to our destination of Arkansas. Much like our previous video, Arkansas really has a pretty straightforward history. The original Native American tribes that called this land home were the Quapaw, Caddo, and Osage Nation. This would later be followed by the Cherokee, Creek, Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Seminole. In 1541, Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto was the first European to travel to the area. Unlike many states we have talked about, this explorer wasn't interested in the land or establishing a settlement. What he was there for was purely to inquire from the local tribes if there was any gold or other valuable minerals to be found in the area. His search was ultimately unsuccessful, but he did find himself tricked by the Kaskwe tribe into a war with the Pakaha tribe. Although, later on, DeSoto would try to instill fear into the local tribes by claiming to be a sun god. French explorers named Jacques Marquette and Louis Joliet reached the Arkansas River in 1673 but basically just traveled through the area on their quest for northern lands. Robert LaSalle and his partner Henry de Tonti came to the area in 1681 looking for the mouth of the Mississippi River, of which they were successful and claimed the area for New France. Henry would establish the first successful European settlement in the area five years later, and it was known as Poste de Arcasea. Following the French and Indian War, France secretly gave Spain the Louisiana Territory, which contained Arkansas, in trade for Florida. In 1800, Napoleon Bonaparte conquered Spain, and as a result, the Louisiana Territory returned to French control. This didn't last long, since three years later, after England declared war with France, Napoleon would sell all French-owned lands in the New World to the U.S. as part of the Louisiana Purchase. As with many states, Arkansas was originally considered a territory, and it stayed as such until June 15, 1836, when Andrew Jackson officially made it the 25th state. The flag of Arkansas has quite an interesting design, and it even includes a feature, or should I say symbol, that I never would have thought about. The one you are seeing became the official state flag in 1913, and it was chosen from about 65 other design ideas. This one was submitted and created by a man named Willie Hawker. The red, white, and blue colors represent it being part of the United States. In the center is a symbol in the shape of a diamond. This is the part I found so interesting, since it actually represents the first diamond mine discovered on U.S. soils in Murfreesboro in 1906. From that time until 1952, it produced over 400,000 diamonds. Making up the border of the diamond shape is 25 stars that symbolize it being the 25th state. In the center is the words Arkansas, for obvious reasons. Below this are three stars that symbolize it being ruled by three different countries in its history, France, Spain, and the U.S. This is also said to represent it being the third state created by the Louisiana Purchase. Finally, there is a single star above the state's name, and it is said to represent the Confederacy. Enough history, let's look at the cryptids. Arkansas shockingly isn't extremely rich in different types of cryptids, but that doesn't mean there aren't any interesting ones. Of course, there is the aggressive, red-eyed Bigfoot known as the Folk Monster, but I won't talk about it here since I already included it in my Boggy Creek video. So jumping right into it, I want to talk about a fairly, to some, controversial cryptid, and that would be a living pteranodon. In 1982, a group of people reported that while near Texarkana, they saw an odd-looking creature flying. It was said to be visible for about 20 seconds, and the body had smooth skin without any feathers, and had a sharp, pointed beak, a long crest on the back of its head, and no tail was seen. Once they returned home, they began looking at pictures of animals and books, and the only one that fit was a pteranodon. Following this, in 2012, a woman named Laura Dean reported that she had encountered a similar creature while driving her S-10 truck over a bridge 
on the way to the grocery store. Suddenly, a massive flying creature emerged from under the bridge and was about six feet away from the vehicle. According to Laura, the wings beat with such force that she could feel the air rushing across her truck. She says it had smooth, asphalt gray skin, its wings were thick and shaped like an airplane's wings, on the end of each were claws, it had a pronounced long crest coming from the back of its head, and the oddest part was that it had a long skinny tail with a diamond shaped tip. The only size comparison was that it appeared to be larger than her truck. According to Laura, she wasn't scared of the creature, but it was more in a sense of awe that she was seeing something that many consider extinct. From what I have read, there are quite a few other sightings as well around the same area. With that one out of the way, let's look at a few land-based cryptids. Our next creature may not be as fantastic as a living pteranodon, but it is real odd. There are a lot of sightings of what can only be described as hyenas roaming about the forests. A man who simply goes by the name of Dwight says that he lives in a small town of Twin Creek in Izzard County. Apparently, a friend of his was out hunting, and he alleged that he saw a hyena run across the road in front of him. At first, Dwight didn't believe him, but suddenly more and more people started coming forward with similar stories. In fact, Dwight even noted that some have seen them hanging around cows and are known to kill them. At one point, the carcass of a cow was seen lying on the road, where something had obviously drug it to that location. Not long after, the body vanished, and many assumed it was simply a bear, but Dwight asserts that it might have actually been a hyena. Around 2010, a woman named Lila was hiking the Eagle Rock Loop Trail when she saw a pack of five of them walking around. She states that she is very familiar with many of the predators in the forest, and this wasn't one of them. At one point, a friend of hers made a noise, and this intrigued the animals as they ran straight at them at what was assumed to be 45 miles an hour. Another man stated that on January of 2015, he was in northeast Arkansas, and he ran across a spotted hyena that was only 5 feet from where he stood. Our final report states that a woman was scouting for deer with her ex-husband on Lost Mountain in northern Arkansas. During this trip, they saw a pack of coyotes running around, but one of the members of the group were completely different. It was said to have a pronounced hump, its legs were low to the ground, and its color was off. Apparently, having seen hyenas on the Discovery Channel before, she claimed it looked exactly the same. Similar to this, we have a cryptid that I've had to keep on the back burner since it was seen in so many other states, but it originates from here. And that is the Ozark Howler. Now, let me be clear that many feel that this creature is a hoax, and much of the evidence we have agrees with that theory. Although, as with many sightings, there are reports that affirm that the beast is very real. Found primarily in Ozark Mountains, it is said to look like a mix between a bear and a cat. It has completely black, shaggy fur, a thick bear-sized body, stocky legs, a pair of horns, and a feature we all love, glowing red eyes. Its cry is what is predominantly heard, and it sounds like a mix of a wolf howl, hyena laugh, and elk bugle. According to the original settlers, the creature would make the sound of a woman screaming. This was done to draw men into the forest in order to help, only later to be found with their throats ripped out. Legends claim that the first sighting occurred in 1810 when famed explorer Daniel Boone wrote about fighting off the creature. This event was found in letters to his sister-in-law, and he stated that while near Suter Creek, he came across the massive black creature with horns on its head, and it made a terrible sound. Many sightings have followed, ranging up to 2015. In 1980, a truck driver was pulling off the road to go to sleep when his headlights shone on a large, shaggy-furred, black cat-like creature that had a beard and glowing red eyes. Some are adamant that this being is very real, and that it can walk on its hind legs, but prefers to stay on all fours. What is very interesting is that it is theorized that it may actually be a type of Bigfoot. Our next being is, again, touted in mystery and legend, but it sounds fantastic. The creature was, or is, known as the Galro. It is described as being a 20-foot long lizard-like creature that has two long tusks growing out of its mouth, sharp spines running down its back, webbed feet, and lives in a cavern known as Devil's Hole near the town of Blanco. The pictures look very reminiscent of a chupacabra. A businessman named William Miller was in the area around January of 1897. While in the town, he kept hearing reports of a creature killing livestock, which made the man take action. 
He gathered a posse and traveled to the cave where the beast was said to reside. Inside, they found numerous animal bones along with some human ones. The group waited outside the cave for the creature to emerge. Unfortunately for them, the Gauro wasn't home. Instead, it burst out of the water behind them, ready to attack. The creature shook the ground as it walked, and in the ensuing battle, a tree was uprooted, several horses were killed, and even one of the party member's legs had been severed off. By the end of the battle, the men were victorious, and the creature lay dead on the ground. The body was sent to the Smithsonian Institution, where they claimed it never arrived. Just so it is said, there are many theories out there that the Smithsonian is actually hiding artifacts that don't correspond with agreed upon history. Is that the story here? Maybe. Is it possible this story was made up by writers having a slow news day in 1897? Possibly. Since that time, there have been other less detailed sightings of the creature in the same cave. This leads many to wonder if the one William killed wasn't the only one. I think I'll end this video on one of the many cryptids found in the water. Although, technically, the Galro fits here as well. The famed White River Monster, affectionately called Whitey, is a good one. Reports of the creature emerged in 1915, then 1924, and the best documented one was in 1937. A local respected farmer named Bramlett Bateman saw the creature in the water and claimed it was 5 feet wide and between 20 and 40 feet long. He said it had the head of a catfish, had smooth gray skin like a seal, and blew water out of a blowhole. This sighting concerned the man so much that he actually provided funds to set up a huge rope net that spanned the river to try and capture the beast. This failed as well as attempts by divers to find the creature. Sightings waned off until 1971 when Whitey would once again emerge. This time many people reported seeing the same gray skinned creature but it now had a horn growing from its head. With these sightings, something weird would develop. Along the beach, many three-toed, 14-inch long footprints were found, along with trampled down brush and broken off trees. I couldn't be sure by reading the reports, but apparently they found skin that had been shed off like a snake, only the surface was smooth without scales. Something that is interesting is that in 1973, Senator Robert Harvey signed a bill making White River a refuge for Whitey. According to the bill, it is illegal to harass, trample, harm, or kill the creature. While this is more than likely just a publicity stunt, I do appreciate when it happens. As usual, I couldn't get to every cryptid that roams about this state, so that is what we have the honorable mention section for. You will undoubtedly be shocked to learn that outside of the one mentioned previously, there are a lot of Bigfoot sightings here. Note the sarcasm. <laughs> Areas such as El Dorado has a red-haired version, the Hot Springs has one with distinct shiny eyes, and one that is somewhat new to our investigations is a Sasquatch that is described as resembling more of an orangutan in Washington County. Keeping with this is the creature that is said to resemble a mix between a Sasquatch and a Panther that lives in Greer Ferry Lake and Little Red River. Apparently, this version is capable of living both on land and in water. Whether it just holds its breath or can actually breathe in the water is up for debate. Oh yeah, Lake Conway is said to have a skunk ape as well. As you can tell, there isn't a shortage of Sasquatch in Arkansas. A bit of an oddity is a tale about a boy dog or Arkansas dogman. The stories claim that he was a normal looking kid named Gerald Bettis, who was an absolute terror. I won't go into details of what he did, but let's just say his moral compass was broken. Some claim that the reason behind his actions was due to him being something other than human, and that his eyes would actually glow. Many visit his old residence in home of catching spear activity, but some get more than they hope for. One story claims that dogs still refused to go near the property, while one investigator claimed to have seen Gerald walking about. He was said to be massive in size, had a weird cat-like appearance, long brown hair, odd glowing eyes, and abnormally large arms and hands. A fun one that is more legend than anything is the Snoffus. This is an albino deer that is said to roam about the forest. What makes this different is that instead of normal antlers, it has branches of flowering dogwood rising from its skull. It also is capable of producing a blue mist from its mouth. According to lore, many claim that just by seeing the creature, it is a sign that some type of omen is about to happen. 
While not technically a cryptid, there are reports of a strange unknown carcass being found in Charleston. In 1991, a man named Frank Pryor and his wife Cindy were out deer hunting when they found the remains of a creature that had a rounded skull with two large orbits, a mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth, and spines running down its back. Apparently, the specimen has been studied by many people all over the globe, and the results don't indicate anything that is known. Many believe it possibly is the remains of a chupacabra. I sincerely hope that you enjoy this bonus video, and that I made Arkansas proud. I never would have thought that so many water-based cryptids would be found in this state. Also, I am happy that I was finally able to talk about the Ozark Howler. As always, remember to keep voting for which state you would like to see next by writing the name in the comments. I'm not certain what the video will be for next week, but chances are good that it will be a new Cryptid by Region. If you haven't yet done so, do please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Also, it would be greatly appreciated if you share my videos with someone you know who may enjoy this type of genre. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!